Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of the Transfer Forum presented by No Contact CFB. I am Doug here, and today I am joined by Chairman Escalante of the Sickos Committee. Chairman, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you all for having me back. You're always welcome, man. It's an open invite for everybody. We're here. We're happy. We're enjoying this weekend where we're just going to eat some good barbecue. And you know what goes with good barbecue? Football. Yes. And that's what we're here to do. So today, we're actually going to create our own schedule. Every single week, we're picking these games that we're going to watch. Well, twist. We're picking the sickest game that we're going to watch. So, like, we have a – so, Andrew Wilson and I, we did one a few weeks ago. We picked our key game of the week. But we're doing that, the reverse. All right. Yeah. So, let's get started with week zero. Week zero is very intriguing. We have a lot of programs kicking themselves off, and we have a few matchups. We have one matchup overseas in Ireland, and then the rest are – in the continental United States, outside of Hawaii and Vandy. So, Chairman, where are you going to go with zero? So, uh, week zero, uh, the Sickos game of the week is is, is basically going to be the defending national, uh, the defending Sickos national champions, Nebraska, uh, at uh, against Northwestern in Ireland. That that is our number one game likely this week. It hasn't been fully posted yet, so don't. It's just a season preview. Don't get mad at me, Nebraska fans. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's likely going to be our number one. A close second definitely is that one out there in Hawaii. Vandy and Hawaii being very late. That That is one that we're looking at also. Honestly, like you kind of stole my thunder at Vanderbilt, Hawaii. <laughs> I will actually go somewhere different. Okay. I will go Nevada, New Mexico State. That That is, that is going to be one that is going to be hard to find. Um, I think we watched UTEP and New Mexico State week zero last year on like an ABC affiliates website because that's the only place we can find it. But uh, yeah. yeah, that that that'll probably wind up being on, I think, the El Paso affiliate, which is KVIA, if I still have that remembered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like that's the thing. Like, it's Because when you because I think it's going to be a New Mexico State home game. So it's yes. going to definitely be like something that's really hard to find. The, thing, the only thing that's staying in Vandy in Hawaii is the fact that Vandy's a power five school, and that's going to definitely be on, like, actual, like, linear television. But Nevada, New Mexico State, definitely going to need Periscope. Definitely. Yeah. And then they both have two new head coaches, so we don't know what's going to happen. It's really going to be a work of art when you think about it. Like, it's probably going to be a game that we'll see highlights of Actually, no, we're watching it because this is our schedule. We're going to watch it. But oh, we, everybody we'll be watch. <laughs> exactly. Everybody else is going to definitely uh, go ahead and stream that <laughs> or find it like highlights the next morning. But it's going to be crazy. Definitely watch that out. <laughs> right? It'll be a fun one. Absolutely. Uh, so now we have week one where the rest of the schools actually decide to start playing football. Uh, where would you go, Mr. Chairman? Where are you right. about? So week one, I have, I mean, this week is a little bit weird because it starts on like a Thursday and it goes through like a Monday, which is the first week. It's strange. Um, yeah. The Thursday game, I'm looking at West Virginia at Pitt. Um, Friday game, I'm looking at Illinois at Indiana. And then the Saturday game, I am focused on Rutgers at Boston College. Good choices. Good choices. I actually love the backyard brawl being back. Like those old rivalries being back is beautiful. Like when West Virginia, West Virginia, Virginia Tech were playing recently, yep. beautiful. Like we need, like that's the thing that sucks about realignment. Yep. You don't get the, you don't get those matchups like we used to. But yeah, that was actually my Thursday pick too. Uh, yeah. Pitt, West Virginia. Yeah, no. Friday, I'm actually going to go off a different beat. I'll go with the future conference members tcu and colorado they'll definitely join each other it's a matchup for the future big 12 it's gonna be interesting uh tcu sunny dykes debut and then colorado i don't even know what's going on with that program like it's, we'll, we'll, we'll see carl Durrell in year two i guess maybe yeah like i don't think like he was 
I don't think like, he's the best hire, but like when your coach gets poached, like you can't really fault him. And then Saturday, Saturday is a good sleep. I like Saturday. I think Saturday. I'll go to the Urban Meyer Bowl, Utah, Florida. That'll be fun. I want to see what be. I want to see what Utah brings to the table, uh, physicality wise, and I want to see if Florida's ready. Uh, Napier interests me, but uh, I mean, I I follow the Sun Belt a ton, so to see him go to Florida, I am definitely curious about that one. There, the Sun Belt is an amazing G five conference. Like it's honestly probably the most stable, which is insane when you think about it. it that and the Mac, uh, the Mac yeah. and 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 the Sun Belt basically they they're keeping the the old school, like non realigned and the, the local rivalries together, which is, which is very nice. And I think, I don't know what the future brings, but we definitely love those conferences a lot. Like everything in the Mac, I think it's like a bus ride outside of Buffalo, which is just in its own realm in the Northeast. But yeah, or, yeah. I mean, everywhere else is like what, three, 400 miles max. It's yeah. Pretty, it's, it's, it's a great conference. It's beautiful. When you think about it, like it's what the game should be. That's why we love Maction. Maction held us down during weekdays. That gap between Monday night football and Thursday, it's too long. It is. Thank you. Thank you for Maction. I love <laughs> Maction. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of football, we're back to week two. Chairman, what you got? Because we actually have Friday games too. Uh, we do. Um, I'm going to go with Syracuse at UConn. Um, that's my number one. I have a second place, but I think it may be your second place, uh, for the way, way, way late, late game. But, Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you, I'll just say the advertisers, Syracuse at UConn, and you probably have the main course on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I hate going back to New Mexico state, but it's a rivalry game. It's New Mexico state, UTEP, less than 50 miles away. Like this is going to be art, man. Like, the, the battle of I-10. You no, know, like, it's beautiful. Like, New Mexico State's, like, back in a conference again. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, conference shows, like, actual protected rivals. Like, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. I will I say just, we we cannot forget Mississippi State at Arizona at 11 p.m. Eastern. We can't forget that one. Um, but We really can't. No. We can't do it. We can't forget that one. Uh, they're going to be mad. But that, that may be the the number one game of the week but i'm very curious about syracuse at uconn because i don't know how down syracuse is and i don't know how uconn's gonna look with the jim moore jr so that's very curious to me it's still such a weird like move for him like he's more of a south and the west guy and he's going to the northeast like i don't know how it's gonna work but that's what intrigues us and that's why we become the sickos guy with the hands up looking because we we're very curious (laughs) <laughs> you are very curious. Like, to be honest, like, it's just a beautiful, like, I think hopefully UConn can actually bounce back and be not a punching bag. Because when they were good, they were actually pretty watchable. Yep. Very so fun. Like, very fun program. Yeah. No. Um, so, side note, shout out to Louisville UCF. Like, it's going to be a pretty fun Friday matchup. Like, I think it's going to be very entertaining to see Scott Satterfield, uh, Lee Cunningham, actually, like, do really well. And UCF under Gus. They should definitely bounce back. I mean, it was year one for Gus, but I'll give him credit for that. Um, year two should be a lot better. That was a crazy game last year. I think that was like on a walk-off interception almost, I think. Walk-off pick six. That's literally yep, that's what right. it was. Yep. And, like, honestly, UCF had some crazy games. There was that, the Boise State game, where there was, like, some of the worst interceptions I've seen. Like, it, like, bro, like you threw a pick six because you didn't feel like throwing it, like, fully with extending your arm. Like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> But it makes it makes our uh, our account a little bit more lively. I'll just say that <laughs> it does. No, like to be honest, that game was a work of art. Like shout out UCF, yes. shout out Boise, shout out Louisville. Yeah. All right, speaking of Louisville, they got the another weekday game, week yep. three for Florida State. I think that's gonna be my Friday matchup. Like I think Mike Norvell, it's gonna be put up or shut up time for him. Like I mean, I know Florida State doesn't necessarily have the money to like buy them out but that's gonna be put up or shut up time like so it's gonna be a big statement win if you can beat louisville and then saturday 
think I will go with Penn State Auburn, the rematch. Yeah, that that's out of Auburn, and, and things have known to be a little crazy once you get down to Jordan Hare. Uh, that that was that was on my radar also. Um, mm-hmm. I have a couple of other uh, ones. I am I think they're going to be a little bit late. Um, you know, I don't want to go Rutgers too much in the beginning, but Rutgers at Temple. I'm very Ooh. curious what's going to happen there. Uh, it's it's in it's in Philly. So it's very curious. Um, another one is. I'd like to see these G5 programs that are pretty good mm-hmm. versus like a down P5. So SMU at Maryland is very intriguing. Ooh, I actually might go to that. That's a that's a quick trip down. Like... It may be worth it, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. SMU is high flying. Uh, Maryland, I don't know what to expect, but they were a lower level P5 and those those clashes tend to get a little crazy. Yeah, no, like, when you think about it, right, like, SMU, like, if they didn't lose uh, Sonny Dykes, I do would have taken them, to be honest. But right now, actually, I don't think, like, it's year one transition, so I'll give Maryland a nod. Like, they got yeah. – Maryland's offense is, like, actually really good. It's just that they're in a conference with Ohio State. And, like, when you're in that conference, you can't really do much against Ohio State, really. So I'm just curious. I expect fireworks. I'll just say that. Maybe not good fireworks, but fireworks. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I think it's still going to be two high-powered offenses. It's going to definitely be fun. Oh yeah. So yeah, that also shout out BYU Oregon. That's going to be really fun. Like Bar Burner, two great programs. Want to see Dan Lanning, like how he handles. He has a rough first few weeks because he got a Georgia week one, BYU week three. Like I want to see how he handles it before conference play kicks off. So I normally don't rank FCS games uh, versus FBS, but North Dakota State plays Arizona at Arizona. I'm I'm curious about that one. Uh, our eyes may um, be there, but I normally do. We we normally stay away from those. Mm-hmm. Um, the the sickos wise, we try to keep it FBS because there's the disparity in the 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 play and the in the you yeah. know everything like that. But that's one that's gonna raise some eyebrows, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> we don't know what Arizona's doing there, but it's yeah. gonna be interesting. We'll say that. Like I'll go jetfish this. Like Arizona. For as bad as it was and has a program he inherited, they're a lot better than I thought they'd be. A lot better. So credit out to him. I didn't like the hire initially, but they have credit a, to him. They have a really rough schedule. I think them and Georgia Tech have the worst schedule this year. Yeah, Georgia Tech. Oh god, like that, I think that per, I think they're done, like in terms of like being competitive, like athletics, like it's just really bad. We'll we'll see. We, we hope, we wish for the best for them. We'll say that. I don't, because I am wearing a Georgia. <laughs> I could tell. So, yeah, you know, you can right. give away the Georgia, the Georgia shirt. So, I know you're not a yeah. tech fan. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I do want the games to be competitive, but I also like that off week, essentially, before the conference championship game. So, if we're not contending, then yes, I want a competitive Georgia Tech. But when we are, I like my 56-7, please. I like those. I have a lot of Georgia Tech friends, so they're 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 down in the dumps. I'll just say it that way. To put it lightly, they're 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 reaching that that despair. So I'm I'm sure that makes you happy. It does because now they can't <laughs> rub in when they won the national championship more recently than us. They can't rub that in anymore. So it's all smiles over here. God, I love college football. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Speaking of one of the reasons why I love college football, week four. Black Diamond, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, round two, Lane Stadium, Thursday night, Enter Sandman. It's going to be amazing. Electric atmosphere. Everybody saw those games during the Big East. We need this back full time. Full time. That's my Thursday. That was some great one. All right. I don't have one on Thursday. Um, I will watch the Black Diamond. That's great. My my number one for this week is 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 Duke at Kansas. That's art. That's really That's art, art right there. I mean, we would love to see this in the Final Four, but to see this on the football field, it's it's even better. Yeah, no, it's actually like that's honestly beautiful. Like when you think about it, like so my Saturday game, like funny enough, is Western Michigan versus San Jose State, ten thirty on the West Coast. Max schools don't make that trip. 
No. They don't make that trip. They stay central. They stay east. Far out, they probably go to Colorado. They don't go all the way out west. So, like, I'm just trying to see how they adapt to the time zones, how they adapt. And Western, Western Michigan beat the ACC champion Pitt last year. Like, don't sleep on them. They're huh. a good team. And San Jose State's, what, two years removed from the Mountain Wash title? So, like, these are quality teams, people. Like, we're suggesting games that you need to watch, and That's, this is one of them. That is one. Uh, I, we hope that construction is done at the San Jose State Stadium. We did love the, the screenshots of them playing under construction, but we hope the construction is done and their stadium is complete. Uh, but that's going to be one to watch. I mean, the, the Broncos and Spartans, uh, 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m., what is it? Like, 10.30. Oh, man. That's going to be great. You're going to be just, like, coming down off of, like, your normal games and then just settle into this one because it's going to be weird uh, when you get the the Mountain West and the, the MAC together. Uh, it, it, it's magic. It's such a weird thing because, like, it doesn't, like, happen. Like, you know, you know, like, when you go to a restaurant, right, you try something new. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't expect that they'd go together well, but it does. That's a Mountain West and the MAC. I mean, we only get to see that. We're only normally blessed with this matchup in the Potato Bowl. So uh, to get it in the regular season, it's fantastic. I love, do love them potatoes. That's right. some, yeah, and I had some home fries this morning. Amazing. <laughs> That's good, good food. It's good food. Man, so <laughs> two week five. You want some home fries? I had hash browns, so I, I'll give you that. Uh, I love hash browns. Hash browns are good too. Like I like everything. So funny enough, I'm not a big tater tot person. Huh? I'm not a tater tot, but I'll eat potatoes. I'll yes. eat like all of them, any sort of form. They're probably the most versatile food out there. That's right. I know. Can't go wrong with that. Right. Speaking of potatoes, speaking of the Mountain West, week five, we got an in-state rivalry. Utah State, BYU, only game oh. on Thursday. Like, oh. It's that's, underrated. That's delicious. That's that's the uh, that's the the underheralded part of the the Utah like triangle. There's like BYU yeah. versus Utah, but then when BYU and Utah State go at each other, it's great. Uh, that's a that's a fun matchup. That is that is a big one there. Um, my my one this week is just personally. It's it's kind of like a, a deep personal level for me. It, it's it's Ooh. LSU it's LSU at Auburn. Um, Growing up, uh, I grew up in, in New Orleans. I don't know if he could tell the accent or not, but um, my dad used to always take me to these LSU at Auburn games. Uh, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> bit older. So yeah. I was at the one where, uh, let's see here, Jamie Howard threw four interceptions to in the fourth quarter to have Auburn come back and win that game. And then two mm -hmm. years later where the, the barn was on fire and they were still playing the game. Uh, we, oh, yeah. we, we're basically looking back giant flames uh, coming from the area that we entered the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that is a wild one. Um, Auburn was finally able to beat LSU, I think, for the first time in almost nine or ten years, I think. Um, but that that's one that's just always weird. Um, and yeah. if it's a night game in Auburn, it's going to be strange. I don't know how the teams will look, but it's always has some weird – voodoo strangeness to it and it's just something that I, I cannot turn off so like i think there's a stat i think was it um was it i think it's either one of the schools hasn't won on the road since like what the 90s yeah yeah like that's auburn. how yeah okay auburn had won in tiger stadium since like 2009 they, they did last I mean, year with the, with the yeah. bow nicks running all over the place for like 30 seconds and then throwing touchdown passes it was it yeah. was nuts uh, so I have a feeling there's going to be some weirdness, but I know that may be a mainstream game, but the sickos love stuff when, when there's a series that is just as weird as that one, uh, and tigers versus tigers, it's, it's, it's madness almost every year. No, yeah, Like it's a great choice. Like, and so I know, like you mentioned, you're from Louisiana, I went to Louisiana last summer. I never wanted to leave, man. Like the most amazing food I, I've ever had in my life. And like that's saying something because I love Memphis food, but I oh, yeah. love Louisiana. Like, 
I didn't want to leave either, but that hurricane was like, you got to go. So yeah, I, that's get the, it. I get it. That's why I'm in Texas now. So <laughs> yeah, no, like that's the one like other thing. Like I just can't do the weather. But, oh, it's bad. Yeah, no, I can't do the weather, but I'll give it that. Um, but like shout out, side note, shout out East Carolina, USF. It's a game that people need to watch, but I don't know people won't watch. And I'm actually disappointed you now. Like USF, I do think that Jeff Scott's got them on the right track. It's just that that program's like in the doldrums. East Carolina has always been a solid program. Like they got the shit together under Mike Houston. Like it's gonna be beautiful. Shout out my guy like the part of the transfer portal. You see um East Carolina alone. So this one's not scheduled yet. And I'm hoping that it's the Pac-12 after dark game. Cal at Washington State. That 100% sounds like a Pac-12. I, I want it to be like at 11 p.m. Eastern. I, I want it that late. Um, it feels like it is, but I'm ready for that one so so much. Cal at Washington State. I cannot wait. Because like they're only really other. Because like I feel like they'll put Stanford, Oregon as like the like a 3:30 game. Mm-hmm. They'll put Arizona State at USC at eight. Yep. And then the only other option is really Colorado, Arizona. And that team, that game's definitely going to be the Pac 12 430 game. So it's like, Give I had, that. had well, it has Give a good me that after dark. That's right. Give me that after dark in Pullman. Let's, let's go. I love the Washington State after. Like, I feel like every single time we go to Pullman, like for Pac 12 after dark, it's some insane. It's insane. Like, whether it's Oof. like nothing makes sense there. Pullman is a magical sickos place, and and we love it. It's it's one of our top cities. Uh, it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I do need to go, but one day, one day, one day. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Uh, week six. I am actually going to go off the beaten path. I will go with James Madison versus Arkansas State. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. They get to go see the waterfall in the stadium. Yeah, no, uh, it's good the Arkansas news. State waterfall, love it. Uh, the the Red Wolves, we'll see how they look under Butch Davis. They had a bad first year, but that'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go a little bit off the path here too. Um, I want to see UConn at Florida International. Ooh, that is gonna be one. We we jokingly call it the swamp turf there <laughs> because we can never tell if the the turf is dry or wet in the stadium. We don't. I mean, the, the way it, the light reflects off it, if it's at night, yeah. we just can't tell. Um, but that's one that I'm interesting because that's kind of a measuring stick program for UConn, um, a, a, like a program measuring stick for them. And then FIU, I don't know, with their new coach and then with their athletic departments going through, that's very curious. Um, I, I know it's going to be a main event, like maybe on Peacock or whatever, but Notre Dame at, at, versus BYU in Vegas – that's going to uh, be on TV. Like, that's going to be on TV for sure. But that's just seven thirty. weird circumstances. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the times when you have these weird neutral site games in the middle of the year for no apparent reason, uh, it's very, very weird. And we're going to watch. It's just weird. It's weird. I mean, like, <laughs> the, I mean, it works because they're two independent yes. programs for yes. now for now so they're able to do that and i think it's actually pretty dope like that they're two like conflicting like different like outside of football like what they stand for but they're coming together for one thing that unites everybody Uh, yeah it's very strange we have to mention the 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 main event i guess like the jimbo versus saban thing on on this week um we're going to watch, of course. Uh, it's not necessarily categorized as a sickos game, but maybe because of what occurred in the summer. Uh, it, it'll be ranked by us, I promise you. We don't know if it'll be number one, but that's a that's a, a weird, like, interesting, curious, like, okay, is this going to be a game or not in the beginning of the game? Yeah. And then we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's going to be great. Like, also, shout out Deep South's oldest rivalry, Georgia Auburn. Honestly, the SEC slate's actually pretty good that week. Oh, yeah. You got Tennessee, LSU, and like even South Carolina to Kentucky is going to be pretty good. So, oh, yeah. I got to give it that. So, all righty. Like week seven. 
Here we go. Oh, here we go. We got matchups Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We got everybody. I'll actually go with a game I think that's actually going to be pretty fun. Washington State, Oregon State. Awesome. That, gonna that's be. that's going to be a good one. Uh, I got Nebraska at Purdue. Oh, that's a sicko. That's a sicko right there. <laughs> <laughs> Those are, I mean, we love, we love Purdue. We love Nebraska. Uh, they're playing each other. Let, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yep. It's going to be good. So there we go. Like, no shame in that. No shame in that. It's going to be art. Yeah. We're moving on to week eight. Give me UAB versus Western Kentucky. Ooh, that's going to be a the, fun one. Two of the premier conference USA schools up until probably next year when UAB leaves them. It's going to be one of the last matchups ever. And West Kentucky, I want to see whether they can replace the firepower that they lost last year. UAB is going to be under interim coach, or he got the full-time coach job, job. But just a lot of turnover at UAB. I'm just curious because both these programs are cutting in different directions. And you got to shout out some love for Conference USA. So I got to give love for them at least once this program oh for sure uh definitely i'm gonna go sunbelt special southern Ooh. miss at texas state in san marcos um i, I want to see what southern miss has this year after they had the crazy super back years maybe they actually have a quarterback instead mm -hmm. of having 10 injuries uh and then texas state i don't know what they're doing i don't know if their transfer recruiting method is working and yeah. so it could be either two bad teams coming together for a lot of fun in San Marcos, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Sun Belt special that week for me. Um, I do also have in Indiana at Rutgers here. It's a good uh, show. That's a, that's a good one there. Boston College, UConn. Oof. That's my other one. That's my other <laughs> one. It's just it's on it's on linear TV too, people. Oof. You're gonna watch this. You're Oof. gonna watch Jim Mora Jr. Put up a fight and still lose by 20. Like, but it's going to be watchable. Oh, yeah. It's going to be art. Like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. But, <laughs> I'm just, I mean, like, I'm looking at all these games and I'm like, I cannot wait for every single one of these games. They're all going to be ranked like weekly, like the, the 20, yeah. the 20 some odd games we rank, rank each week. So each one we mentioned, we're going to rank, we don't know where it's going to be. But it's going right. to be ranked for sure. Yeah, no, it's going to be ranked definitely. And then this is the one I think that we both I think are going to get agreed to this week, this Friday. UMass, UConn, Week Ten, the biggest bowl of the entire country. Did Better we skip than the national Did we, Did we skip, skip Week that? Nine? No, Week Nine was. You know, Week Nine I said uh, Boston College, UConn. Oh, okay. All right, I had New Mexico State at UMass, but we'll lead it in the UMass and UConn after that. How about that? Yeah, no, like, I'm telling you, that bowl game is going to be cinema. Like, run out of your movie theater. Watch this game. Just not not leaving. Not Don't leaving the leave. seats. Nope. Don't I leave have, the seats. I have, like, like, eight screens up. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, no, like, so you, we're both in agreement for that game? Because, like, I oh. feel like it's only... It's I mean, there's, there's others there on Saturday, but like mm -hmm. that's the that's the winner of the week, likely already. Yeah. So it's definitely the winner of the week. You got to give out credit there. Week 11. Here we go. Here we go. I don't like chairman. What are you thinking of week 11? There's there's a few. Um the one that I, I'm looking at the most, uh, let's go like G5 wise, is mm -hmm. I love this rivalry. It's Wyoming at Colorado State. Um, they're, they're like separated by like 40 or 50 miles um, mm -hmm. and they do not like each other. Uh, and it's normally a wild game. Um, then I have another like, I guess like Big Ten West special, which is Wisconsin at Iowa. Um, that, that one last year, again, like low scoring, low yardage, a lot of punts, a lot of field position. That's what the sickos like. It's a good choice. I'm going to go G5, rivalry, James Madison, Old Dominion, Battle of Virginia, 
It's bigger than Virginia, Virginia Tech. Let's just be honest. It's bigger. It's bigger. It's, like, let's it not is. lie here. No, yeah, I mean, like, no. This is going to be the new new Sun Belt special rivalry. Get to it's a conference game now. This is great. I know the good thing, like the beautiful thing about the Sun Belt, like the MAC, like everything's actually like close. Like we don't have that anymore. Like look at ACC; they're all the way up from Syracuse all the way down to Florida. Does not make sense. Special shout out Golden Boot, LSU, Arkansas. Oh yeah, gonna be a classic. Those games, are, game. those games are wild. I don't. I, don't, I mean. I've I've attended a few of those. <laughs> it's just it's just a weird again. Like you put those two teams together, it's just weirdness happens. I'm just annoyed that they don't have it on Black Friday anymore. Like I grew up with that. Yeah, uh, maybe when they they expand the SEC, that that'll change. We'll see. Yeah, they'll definitely get that Black Friday game back because A and Texas are definitely getting that getting that game back. So mm. well, now week twelve. Oh. Chairman, floor is yours. Um, wow. I uh, I have one that I'm very curious about here. I'm curious about the raging Cajuns going to Florida State. Oh, Upset I'm alert? very curious. I'm very curious about that one. I don't know what the raging Cajuns are going to look like with the new coach and everything, but that's mm-hmm. one that that piques my interest. Early in the season, they they could be they could fall off. Uh, yeah, but that's one that's like I don't know where Florida State's going to be. Um, that's one that I'm very curious. And then another Sun Belt to Power Five ACC special, Coastal Carolina at Virginia. Ooh, those two, job. very very curious on those. I'm going for the biggest rematch of all time, Texas Kansas. <laughs> Can Texas get it back to blood? I don't think so. But I want to, I want to put it up there. But I'm just like, uh, you know, uh, you don't expect it to happen two years in a row. It's gonna be ranked. I know it. I didn't want to do it. It's again. gotta be up there, man. Like he, Kansas went into their crib. I know. And ended so many careers because <laughs> of what they did. It needs to be ranked. It needs to be it, number one. Uh, it's hard to put number one because you don't expect it. And then when you start to expect it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to like doing the weird, like sickos reverse jinx, I guess we could say. I feel you. No, I definitely feel you. But that is because it's also think about it. It's right before Thanksgiving. Yep. There's definitely going to be a low, like trap game for Texas. So I just want to shout out Ole Miss at Arkansas. You, you, Great matchup. You, you you two have been weird. And it's a very, you're you're very weird SEC West, like middle of the pack people, and you love to just battle each other out. And then their last couple of games were amazing. So th- just say that for sure. Definitely. Definitely. And the final week before Army Navy, Bravery Week, Thanksgiving, big day, everything. I'm going with the battle of bowl eligibility. Give me oh, yeah. Rutgers, give me Maryland. Oh. That's what's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be. That's. I mean, that's what it was last year. It was fantastic. It was, it was a lot of fun. And then the record still won up in the bowl. Uh, <laughs> Shout out COVID. Uh, we we got to do, we got to do the egg bowl, um, for sure. That's the weird, you know, Thanksgiving for sure. Um, Arizona State at Arizona. I don't know if the thing with Herm is gonna fall apart. Um, I'm but the territorial cup. Job. Well, I'm curious there. Um, and then my, my favorite Sun Belt rivalry that is just renewed, I guess, but they used to play each other a lot. Southern Miss at ULM. Uh, it's a good one. That's, that's a family rivalry. I would just say that one. It's a good one. Special shout out Minnesota, Wisconsin. Closest rivalry of all time. Oh, yeah. Battle of the Axe. Big transfer portal beef in the chat because of it. So <laughs> it's really big because we have Minnesota, Wisconsin guy. So awesome. All right. So, final week, Navy Army. Oh, it's, yeah. it's tradition. It's for the troops. It's for the Sorry. family. Like you also, can't really. Also, here, give me the Conference USA Championship. I don't know who's in it. I don't know who's really? in it. I don't know who's going to be in it. But I just give me the Conference USA Championship. I am very curious about who's going to be in it. 
what this conference looks like now, uh, especially with the the missing Sunbelt people. I, I just want to know who's in it, and I'm going to watch it. Just give me the Conference USA title game. Yeah, no, like, honestly, it's probably the most puzzling game out there. I don't know so, who's going to be in it. No idea. But I'm going to watch. <laughs> we're definitely going to watch. Like, we're, it's a bowl season. We're oh, definitely yeah. going to watch all of those, all of those, but specifically the Mountain West. And if Georgia makes it, the SEC, of course. But, oh, yeah. yeah, no. Speaking of bowls, bowl games. What's the sickest one you think you're going to watch? Okay, well, I have this shirt on. For the Duke's Mayo Bowl, right there with the broken Mayo Trophy already. Sorry, the <laughs> shit. But yeah. the Duke's Mayo Bowl, and then the Sickos Committee is basically headquartered in Shreveport, mm-hmm. uh, in our minds and in our hearts and our souls. So the Independence Bowl is is always uh, one that we really love. Uh, the Independence Bowl yeah. and the Duke's Mayo Bowl, they both follow us. I don't know why, but we, we love them both. Those are our, our two favorite Sickos Bowl games. Uh, depending on the matchups, the others can can be there. You know, rest in peace, Outback Bowl. We'll, we'll miss you, Bloomin' Onion, and, you know, Coconut Shrimp. We'll pour That's some right, up for right. there, but uh, we, we won't. We don't want to recognize whatever it's called now. It, it's, it's the Outback Bowl in our hearts. Um, it hurts. It does it hurts. hurt. You know, meaningless corporate sponsorships going away after many, many years. It, it, it really hurts. January uh, 2nd, man. Like that, that after New Year's, yeah. her guy was still recovering. You mm-hmm. go to Outback, you get your free app, you enjoy your day. Like, but we don't have it anymore. Like, tradition is gone. I know. It hurts. Yeah, yeah, just, you know. Maybe one day we'll sponsor a bowl and we'll 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 give out free appetizers somewhere. I don't I don't know where, but who knows? <laughs> free food is the way to go. Speaking right. of food, Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Oh yes. In the name of Kellogg's, we will be watching it. Oh, we'll yeah. be eating cereal. This is going to be good. This is going to be very entertaining. ACC, Pac-12, mm-hmm. not the best, but not the worst. And then you get corn, you get frosted flakes dumped on the winner. Exactly. It and is then very much more sanitary than mayo. Than the mayo dump is. I mean, they they need to perfect it a little bit better. It was in its you know trial run. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be better this year. Another thing, uh, uh, object or uh, we love the dumping. Um, shout out to Holly Anderson and her saying, the famous Idaho potato bowl. The only bowl with chives in its logo. Um, we, we definitely love that one. That is a, a staple around the, the household here. So that is one that we, we really, really love. The potatoes really go a long way. The French fries. And we talked about the home fries earlier. See, we were just bringing it all back. Everything's circular. <laughs> That's right. You know what goes well with fries? Drinks. And yes. tropical smoothie cafe bowl getting smoothie poured on you. Very not sanitary, but I we we're trying to we're trying to um, figure out if they're going to sponsor it again this year. It, it seems blank. Uh, Ooh, I don't oh, I don't no. we don't know for sure. And we we have a special um, you know a place in our heart. They actually credentialed us. Uh, nice. One of our members is based out of Dallas, and they tried to get credentials for some bowl games, and that was the one that said yes. Uh, so we we love that one. We tried to get some credentials to some other bowl games. Uh, but they said no. And that was the only one that said yes, just because we lived in the area, we tried. And they credentialed us. And so that's a big, it's one that's, uh, we really love the blend zone at the end of the end zone of one of them with the tropical <laughs> smoothie. But we hope it comes back. But it, it right now it appears to be sponsorless. So fingers crossed. Let's hope the smoothie come back. Come back smoothie, smoothie. Because yes. like some bowls just go through well together. Cheese yes. is work. That's right. Tostitos, Tostitos need to go back to the Fiesta Bowl because oh. that was perfect. Like, yeah. Bro, well, that they was gotta, perfect. Did they ever dump chips or was it just... I don't think they've dumped they chips. Need to, like, they need to dump chips. Uh, they can't do it now because it's a semi. But like, <laughs> a New Year's Six, like, once New Year's Six, yeah, dump the chips. Like, we need bowls. That that dump random be, items. That's right. Yeah, like, That's orange, right. orange Bowl dumps oranges. Like, yeah. we've seen that. Like, yes. we've seen, like, you can't really dump a gator, but like no. you can dump like objects. Well, I mean, it's the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, so maybe some shredded 
you know, tax forms. I don't, I don't, that could work. That could work. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, we're just here just trying to figure out how to make college football better when they're making it worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining like somebody getting a pile of sugar dumped on them. <laughs> just like they would just have it every oh that'd be the sugar bowl would not work out well. Uh you can roses, probably do like sugar packets. I mean roses could do rose petals, sugar packets. That'd be great. Yeah, no, rose petals would be good, but when you think about it, like you know how many rose petals you have to get to like fill yeah. up. It's just well, so. Well, what are, what do they do with the flowers after the parade? So, I mean, are they just going to throw those away? They could put those in Gatorade containers, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I also feel like rose bowls, like the one bowl that they'll never ever like try and gimmick with. No, just, just... no, unfortunately, they're too, they're too good for that. They are too good for that, and that's the only bowl that's too good for that. Everybody else, Let's do find something to dump. Find that's something right. to dump. Yeah. So, yes. Alrighty, I think we are all covered with our schedules. Chairman, the floor is yours. Plug away. Well, um, you know, if you if you're aware of us, you can follow us at, at Sickos Committee on Twitter. Uh, we did just launch a Substack, um, which is the Sicko Substack. Um, we have it pinned to our, our Twitter list right now. We just created uh, our our first Sickos metric called Detmer uh, after. Uh, you know, the, the infamous Ty Detmer who loved to just throw the ball everywhere um, without any regard for where the ball was going. You know, uh, his Heisman season, he had 41 touchdowns and 28 interceptions, uh, something that we probably won't see. So that's a metric that we just launched uh, last year. Jaden Daniels, who's with LSU now, the quarterback for Arizona State, had the highest Detmer. Uh, Tulsa's quarterback, <laughs> Tulsa's quarterback was second. Um, so we kind of measure like it's almost like a balance of who throws the most yards uh, combined with the most touchdowns and the most interceptions. So it's like all of those combined and we have a fantastic uh, mathematical formula for that. So we'll be keeping track of that this year. We do our normal weekly rankings of the games. Also, if you stay tuned to us, we are going to do a preseason poll right around when they launch the AP poll. We'll link it out. And then you, if you follow us. You can submit your top 10 teams and then we sort them out and rank them and we'll list the top 25 uh, Sickos teams to, to begin of, of the preseason. And we do that um, probably about four or five times a year, once every month. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, crown uh, Sickos national champion at the end of the year, I believe after the conference championships. Wow. That is, you guys are really involved. Like, you know, cause I was looking <laughs> Because I was looking at it, like, you know, I see you guys are doing, like, F1, you do college basketball, you do, yeah. like, everything. Well, we started with the college football thing, which is kind of strange. We made the account for, like, maybe, like, 50 people to make inside jokes. Mm -hmm. I started tweeting last year along with the games, and then I think the first thing that that, that kind of went viral for us was a Central Connecticut punt that was only three yards, and nobody had the video of it. So I took the video with like my, my phone uh, and then posted it and said it was sickos quality, which it was. Uh, the ball got snapped over the guy's head. He ran for like 30, 40 yards and kicked it as far as possible. And it bounced just basically three yards over the <laughs> line of scrimmage. And then from there, uh, it just took off. And I mean, I, I, I'm still amazed by this, but I mean, you think about it, there's a lot of teams. I know you're a Georgia fan, but I mean, if you're just like a fan of like a normal, like lower tier SEC team or like a lower tier Big Ten team or like the Sun Belt or the Conference USA, legitimately after your first two or three weeks, you're, you're kind of, you don't have the national championship hopes. They're gone. You're right. hoping, you're, you're hoping and praying for six and six in a bowl game. And mm -hmm. that's basically a lot of the fans and that's where we're at. And that's what we want to watch. Um, personally, being a fan of like one of the worst FBS teams of all time, uh, you know, I had luckily attending the school there, but uh, it's just the way that I consume the game. And then I didn't realize there was this many people that consume the game that way. So it's, it's been fun to start and we're going to keep going and growing. I know we, we don't, you know, some people are just like, hi, you make the same joke over and over again uh, or whatever, but uh, that's how we consume the game. We have a lot right. of fun and that's why we're just having, we're trying to celebrate everything really, honestly. Um, 
you know, that's great. Georgia won a national title. We're excited for you guys. So awesome. Fantastic. But we're also excited for, hey, you know, Rutgers got in a bowl game at five and seven. Uh, yes. You know, that should be celebrated. You know, not everybody gets to win a national title in college football. Exactly. So that's what that's what we do. And and we're about fun. We make stupid jokes. Uh, we make, you know, ridiculous humor. We we. Our, our chairman of graphic design uses the sickos guy face in like every possible way imaginable. Uh, and we, we follow like, you know, just the fun aspects of sports, because I mean, if you, you know, you get a little bit older, you live and die by every win. It's, it's no fun. And we're trying yeah. to have fun. We're trying to have fun. We're trying to celebrate it. Yeah. You, you may be bummed that your team lost, but like, Let's go have fun another way here. And so that's what we're just trying to do. It's a, it's, it's a great time. And you guys are awesome. I, I appreciate everything. I mean, you were the first people to reach out to us. I was on a podcast with you guys wow. like last year doing mm -hmm. like regular game picks. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did really bad. So it was fantastic. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm God. the overall champion, by the way. <laughs> Congratulations. I was like three and seven, uh, but like everything I picked went the other way. It was fantastic. I was just laughing. I was like, I just could not be more wrong. But that's what you get when you have the sickos guy trying to pick normal games. Right. It doesn't work out. So, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like, you... think it's just a beautiful thing. Like you think about it because like everything's like so serious on like a micro, like a macro level. But when you micro level it, like you can afford to not be serious. And I feel like you're definitely like, sickos you're definitely making the game more fun for the casual people like you know like not everybody's not everybody's gonna be an alabama fan some oh. people might be a mississippi state fan or some people might unfortunately be an Auburn fan like you know what i mean like it's just like you have there's a whole base that's definitely uncovered and yeah. people just like watch games casually and like people it's, are also it's... degenerates and gamble so well, like are, yeah, we don't necessarily gamble or anything like that. We don't right. condone it, but it's like it's fun to see. Like we, we want to be that weird, like you know, that account that always alerts you, like, hey, it's a close game between, you know, like a uh, close game between Alabama and Auburn in the fourth quarter. Watch this. We, like we want to be right, the opposite right. to like, like Old Dominion and and uh, you know, <laughs> App State. They're going to the third overtime. Watch this. Uh, yeah, we want you to. We want to put the eyes on the lesser known games because it, it it's it's much more fun um, in our eyes. I mean, we're gonna watch the other stuff. We're gonna watch the national title game. We're gonna watch all that. Uh, we're we're gonna watch it, but we're watching everything else too. So we consume it all. Yeah, no, like all these small schools, they definitely need our eyeballs. We want all of them to survive. That's right. Um, so we're working on something too for the Substack. I still haven't finished it. Um, on the Substack, we're going to have like a decision, uh, I'm sorry, a decision map, uh, where if you're a fan of like a power five team and you want to adopt a G five team to follow this year, um, we're going to have like, like funny scenarios where you can answer questions about your fanhood and follow the decision tree to say, Hey, I, okay, I'll follow this G five team this year. So I have, I think maybe about seven out of 65 done. I need to get working on it, but we're probably going <laughs> to post those to the Substack. I'm trying to finish the big 10 first. Uh, and then I'll start doing conference wise to like lump them together. And it's yeah. just funny, funny little graphics to try to make, um, you know, like, Hey, what, what, you know, I'm an Iowa fan. What, what's my G5 team? Well, like, do you want to see more Iowa football or something completely different? uh and just basically decisions like that and you just go through the map so we're working on that um it's it's a lot of fun and i'm sure we'll be tweeting back and forth at each other and uh the t portal you know podcast and mm -hmm. uh the no no contacts folks so uh, it, it'll be it'll be a blast i cannot wait for the season i know it's like july 2nd and it's just like hurry up and get here i want to see nebraska northwestern already it's the last month without football <laughs> That's outside right. the USFL. Outside the USFL. Well, we do one. have that title game coming up, so we're excited for that one. Shout out Philadelphia Stars. Hopefully they bring it home. Hopefully <laughs> they bring it home. Let's go blob. So uh blob. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. I love that mascot. It's so bad, but it's so good. <laughs> like that's the one thing with like Philly mascots. It's like they're all like objectively bad, but it works. 
Yes. Outside yeah. of swoop, which you kind of have to have an eagle, but like yeah. everything else, like gritty. Swoop is like yeah. The fanatic. Oh yeah. Lob. Yes. Like, it's beautiful. They're, they're they're great, great, great mascots. Let's see. I would love to see the blob running with the title, but I don't know. Birmingham's pretty good, so they're we'll see. Really good. They're really good. Hopefully, Birmingham shows out for that title game. They, they should, but like you know, hopefully they see their team lose. But that's beside the point. Okay. Last month without football, we're almost there. Almost there. Just gotta make, just gotta make it through. <laughs> we'll get there. We will get there. Again, thank you so much. I hope. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he's feeling better, too. Hopefully he's feeling better yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. I, hope, I know he wasn't doing well, but uh, hopefully he gets better soon and he can enjoy the fourth. But, again, yeah, thank no, you so no. much. Of thank course. you so much for having him on. Uh, I mean, we'll, if you want to link up during the season anytime, uh, reach out. I could probably bring uh, the graphic design guy, mm-hmm. uh, our vice president of graphic design, Jordan, on. He'll, he'll talk, and he's, uh, he's, he's a lot of fun also. I'll just say that. Yeah, no, I I feel like everybody like if they're as good as you, I feel like everybody's just gonna be. <laughs> our committee is fantastic. Fun. Our committee is like, it just we just bat around in our Discord all the time. It's insane. It's great. It's a good mesh. Like it's a good mesh. So like, it's definitely gonna be a fun fun season for everybody. Yep. Yeah, no, no. So all right, that is it for everybody for this episode. <laughs> hopefully, you can see our. <laughs> hopefully, you'll enjoy these schedules. Hopefully yes. you enjoy all sorts of potatoes, appetizers, yes. uh, football games, and sugar. Um, so, <laughs> Corn flakes, frosted flakes, flakes. Uh, mayo, we, mayo with your hamburger if you need that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like if you want juice, like we got smoothies, we got oranges we got to make juice out of. So like, peach, peach bowl, we got it. We got all the food groups covered. We got all the food groups covered. If you need taxes done, we got that covered too. Like we got everything that you need. That's right. During bowl season. So we got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, follow Sickos Committee at Sickos Committee. And uh, definitely subscribe to their Substack and watch out for all the other videos that will be out from Terrace of Portal CFB. And enjoy your day. Thanks so much. Happy fourth, everybody. Happy fourth.